National Anthem. Jacqueline. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleam, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallant. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet or the land of the free and the home of the brave. Almighty God of all creation, once again, you bless us with the beautiful season of spring. Spring, your message of hope to us, tiring of winter's icy grip. A sleeping world emerges to new and wonderful possibilities. Spring is the season of hope and optimism. Spring inspires us to get up and out and move into action. It is a time to get busy with new projects and enjoy the many blessings you give to us. Soon we will be playing in Friendship Park, forgetting the cold, icy winter. Some of us remember Ernie Harwell announcing the first spring baseball broadcast with a reading from the Song of Solomon referring to spring. For yes, the winter is past, the rain is over and gone, the flowers appear on the earth, the time of the singing of birds to come, and the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. We thank you for the blessings of our Orion community, and we ask you to look over us and inspire our Orion community leaders with actions that are helpful and good to all of us. O oh God of all creation, we pray for peace and friendship in our community and in our country. Let each of us learn to be more tolerant of those things which we might not share in common. Help us to understand our differences of opinions, of tastes, and of values. These are the very blessings which continue to give our Orion community and our country its great strength. May God continue to bless us and our country. Amen. And we have a hand for our color guard. Our introduction will be given to us by Linda Potter. Good morning. As they said, my name is Lyndon Potter. In August, I had the honor of spending the day with our supervisor. There, I learned about the police, the water tower, and how much it could hold. I toured the fire station and took a ride around Friendship Park. I was even able to see the new play structure blueprint. It was interesting seeing all the tasks the supervisor has to do. 
Abe Lincoln was very honest. Ronald Reagan had integrity, and Gerald Ford kept his word. These are qualities of a strong leader. These are qualities that make people believe in them and give them their support. When I think about what I want to be when I grow up, I think that I want to be somebody who has these traits. I want to be somebody that people look up to. I want to be someone that is respected. I also want to be a mentor to younger people. Let me introduce to you someone that I think has all these traits that I would like to be like when I grow up. Our township supervisor, Mr. Chris Barnett. Can you hear me back there? Okay, well, welcome. Welcome to uh, Orion Township. I didn't know I had this many friends. I know some of you are here by obligation. <laughs> um, so I want to thank, uh, thank the people that have made this possible so far. Dr. Joe reminded me that we were not starting right at 8 o'clock, and he had a uh, wisdom tooth patient at 9. Uh, so thanks, Dr. Joe, for being here. A um, little nerve-wracking when you have a young person introduce you, uh, but it is my honor to have Lyndon Potter, who we did spend the day together, and I jokingly call him the governor because one day, I think he will be. Um, I figured I'd invite him so maybe he'd uh, stay, stay away for a little bit. But just like any, I'm going to take you through uh, what's going on in Orion Township, and we're going to go uh, a baseball spin. Anybody that knows me knows I love baseball. One of my favorite days of the year is coming up on Monday. It's opening day in Detroit. So it's opening day in Orion Township. And before we start, I'd like to recognize some uh, very special guests we have in the room today. A lot of elected officials, uh, so if you are um, an elected official, I'd like to try to recognize most of you all in once. I see our state representative, Brad Jacobson, here in the front. Uh, thanks for being here. Um, if you're an elected official, if you would please stand and be recognized right now, I really do appreciate that. Um, and like every baseball game, we have a commercial break to start us out. I'm um, pleased, one of the big announcements, you're going to hear several great announcements of things that are happening uh, in Orion Township. Uh, we have two brand new partners that we're announcing today. One we're going to enjoy in a little bit, Crank's Catering, with some of our favorite baseball fare. Uh, is Jeff here today? I don't think he could make it. But we are thrilled to have uh, Jeff Crank and his team on board here at the Orion Center. And we're also pleased to announce that we have just partnered with William Beaumont Hospital. Uh, some of you may know that in the lower level of this building, we have a wellness clinic that to this date has not been utilized. So we are thrilled to announce our partnership with Beaumont Hospital. And today, joining us, uh, if you could please stand if you're with Beaumont, I'd like to especially recognize Nancy Sus Susick, who's the hospital president. Nancy, I saw you. There's Nancy. Thank you for being here, Nancy. As well as uh, Joan Phillips, who is the Vice President of Clinical Support Services. And Joan's going to give a couple brief remarks. Thank you. I think everyone came for the chili dogs this morning. Well, good morning. I'm Joan Phillips. I'm Vice President at Beaumont Hospital, Troy. I'm so honored to be here with you today and to announce that Beaumont Health System, we're committed to work collaboratively with the Orion Community Center to promote and improve health and wellness in Orion Townships for their senior citizens. I've been so pleased to be part of forming this partnership. Through it, we will work together to promote a healthy community within Orion Township and its surrounding areas. This strategic partnership will allow Beaumont an opportunity to integrate its health and wellness programs into the heart of your community. We will be providing three days a week on site services within the wellness center down in the lower level, in addition to also providing regular community health and lecture series to its members. Experts including physicians, nurses, resident physicians,
promoting health and wellness in your community. Program topics will be developed based upon the needs of its members. Monthly calendars will be developed with topics including health screenings, education for disease prevention, and a variety of community education programs. These programs will mainly target senior citizens while also providing programs for women and children and others as requested. Topics that may be offered include heart and brain health, weight and diet management, diabetes education, women's health, mobility, joint and bone health, fall prevention, sports medicine, mental health, medication education, healthcare reform, and an Ask the Expert series, to name just a few. So on behalf of Beaumont, we are extremely excited and very proud to be a partner here in the Orion Township. We are happy to be offered the opportunity to carry out our mission to advance the health and wellness initiatives in the communities we serve. Thank you very much. Thank you. I know some people don't let you fast forward through the commercials at home now. Well, you can't fast forward through that one. All right, so moving on. Um, so like I said, I'm going to take you through a snapshot of Orion Township and where we're at. And I tell you, we're in great shape uh, through, through my favorite sport, baseball. But first, what makes a great team? I'm going to show you a couple clips here of people that I highly respect. Uh, and uh, we're going to hear from them what makes a great team. We want the Big Ten Championship, and we're going to win it as a team. They can throw out all those great backs and great quarterbacks and great defensive players throughout the country and in this conference. But there's going to be one team that's going to play solely as a team. No man is more important than the team. No coach is more important than the team. The team, the team, the team. And if we think that way, all of us, everything that you do, you take into consideration what effect does it have on my team. Because you can go into professional football, you can go anywhere you want to play after you leave here. You will never play for a team again. You'll play for a contract, you'll play for this, you'll play for that. You'll play for everything except the team. And think what a great thing it is to be a part of something that is the team. We're gonna win it. We're gonna win the championship again because we're gonna play as a team better than anybody else in this conference. We're gonna to play together as a team. We're gonna believe in each other. We're not gonna criticize each other. We're not gonna talk about each other. We're gonna encourage each other. And when we play as a team, when the old season is over, you and I know it's gonna be Michigan again. Michigan. Who's ready to take the field? I know I got some Spartans here, but how can you not get pumped up about Bo? All right, so let's talk, let's talk about what is, what is another, and I know these aren't baseball coaches, but let's, talk, let's look at what another coach, lo, known more locally here, talk, says about teamwork. And then purposely do something to make your teammates better. Reach out to your teammates. Talk to your teammates. Act outwardly towards your teammates to make them better. Start to come together as a family. Enjoy tonight. Enjoy cheering on your teammates tonight more than you do yourself. And watch what happens. Watch what happens when you take some great joy, great pride, how your teammates are doing, how it brings out something special in you. To have a great night. It's already a packed house on our side. Enjoy the atmosphere. Enjoy the night. Play great tonight. Are any questions? Yes, Bring it up. Let's go. Let's go. Help us to play hard, not just for ourselves, but for each other and for Lake Orion. We thank you for this opportunity to play in this great game. As always, God bless Lake Orion. Let's go. Yes. Got some, drag got some dragons in the house. My friends from Waterford and Auburn Hills aren't clapping so much at that clip. Where's this Pat Kittle here today? Um, enjoy cheering on your teammate more than you do yourself and watch what happens. Well, watch what happens. Some of you may have witnessed this.
My name is Zari Long and this is Lake Orion Football. So Jabari Long, soon, not long after uh, Coach Bell gave that speech before that game against Pineac this year, Jabari Long was a senior. That was the first time he ever touched the ball in a game, scored a touchdown. Um, so let's, let's move along here. Let's, let's keep moving here. Let's get back on baseball track. All right, we're going to stay focused on baseball, I promise, for the rest of the time here. Anybody know who this guy is on the screen? That's not true. San Francisco, that's Will Clark. That is Will Clark. Gary Wall from Waterford gets the uh, prize. Uh, Will Clark, when I grew up, was known as a natural. Anybody else know what they used to say about Will Clark? We just swing in baseball. So I grew up, I had a coach named Doc Mayer, who we emulated Will Clark. We emulated everything he did with his swing. He had the sweetest swing in baseball. I looked up last night, there's a few more people on that list now, but when I was playing baseball, he was the guy. So when it comes to, uh, to emulating, and, and I think that's a good, good role for people to find good leaders to emulate, we have a great one here, whoops, who happens to be here with us today as well. Our county executive, Al Brooks Patterson. So let's give a round of applause for Al Brooks Patterson. So for the purposes of today, we're going to think of Brooks as our coach, the coach of our team. Uh, think uh, Jim Leland minus the cigarettes. Still has that raspy voice. Um, I can't think of a better coach that we have here to follow in uh, Oakland County. 62 municipalities, 1.2 million residents. And he's been at the helm for over 20 years, pushing 30, I think, soon. Um, and he has set an example of leadership that many of us elected officials in this room uh, strive to follow. Um, here's just a few. I'm just going to go through a few things that he's been focused on in the last several years. I think the thing he's the most proud of, if you ask him, is his focus on emerging sector businesses. In 2004, uh, Brooks saw that the economy, uh, we needed to be more diversified, and uh, so he took a really strong approach to emerging sectors. Uh, since that time, you can see there are 258 companies, over 44,000 new jobs, have invested $2.6 billion in our county in, in uh, investment. Uh, Brooks over and over says we're uh, the knowledge-based economy, economy, the knowledge-based economy. We have uh, just seen a shift in recent history. Uh, the number one sector in Oakland County for jobs is in the IT field. So, uh, we are, I am doing everything I can do to emulate Brooks. So when the winning coach speaks, you listen and you copy. And that's what we're doing. We can't hear you. What'd you say, Brooks? Oh, okay. I love Orion. <laughs> so that's our coach. I'm going to introduce you now to today's starting lineup. And we have some awesome people in our starting lineup. Hopefully you grabbed a lineup card on your way in. I don't have one up here now, uh, but you can follow along. Uh, our batting first, playing second base, Lyndon, the governor, Potter. Uh, as you all heard a few minutes ago, Lyndon Potter has a bright history in front of him. He sought me out, uh, showed interest in what I did for a living, which you're going to see in a minute. Not many people know what I do for a living. Um, and we did spend a day together, and I think Lyndon has a bright history in front of him. And I um, think there's nothing more important than we can do. And the goal of my leadership is to produce more leaders, not followers. And so, Lyndon, thank you for, at your young age, stepping up and being a leader. And just like the Tigers, we're going to buzz down to fifth, third field in Toledo, the Mud Hens. Um, we have a farm team here in Orion as well that we just recently started. And it's our youth council. Uh, there's 11 students that applied to be on youth council this year, um, all with letters of recommendation, gleaming, I should say. Um, and we've started to meet, and these kids have excitement and energy. We've formed three committees, a business development committee, Community Activities Committee, and an Environmental Committee. And I, let me tell you that Orion Township is in good hands uh, with, with our next wave of leaders. So if you're part of the Youth Council, if you'd please be, stand right now and be recognized.
Thank you. They're even doing ribbon cuttings. Taking my job already. Uh, batting second and playing first base is Susan, the undisputed champ, Kruger. Sue Kruger was, I'm going to let Sue tell you what she does. Success can mean many different things to many different people. For me, it's knowing what I was created to do, having the privilege to get up every morning and do that, and overcoming obstacles along the way. I'm Susan Kruger, the 2014 winner of Oakland County's Elite 40 Under 40. So Sue Kruger, why is Sue Kruger in our starting lineup? Well, obviously, she is the elite of the elite. Uh, over 500, app, 500 people were submitted to uh, the county and Al Brooks' 40 Under 40 program. Sue uh, not only was uh, selected to be in the 40, but she was picked as the elite uh, winner of the 40 Under 40. Uh, and I don't, I don't think the committee could have made a better choice. Let me tell you a little bit about Sue before we introduce her. We've heard a lot about Brooks and the knowledge-based economy that we're shifting to here in Oakland County. Sue Kruger st struggled as a student. It wasn't until she was in college and learned that she learned how to learn. She was transformed from a struggling student to straight A's. Her goal is to give every student access to the same simple skills that changed her life. She promotes a platform of relevant education, encouraging schools to teach relevant skills for the workplace. Sue has spent 13 years teaching students how to succeed. Her book, Soar Study Skills, a simple and efficient system for getting better grades in less time, is a worldwide best-selling study skills book. Um, and her curriculum is available in more than 2,000 schools nationwide and more than 14 countries. So ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcoming Orion Township's own Sue Kruger, Oakland County's Elite 40 Under 40 winner. And she's got her Tigers gear on today. Extra points, Sue. <laughs> so now while we're talking about um, success, let's talk a little bit about how Orion defines success. Well, I have three categories I want to focus on for a couple moments. Job creation, talent retention, and strategic partnerships. Let's talk a little bit about job creation. This is exciting, groundbreaking news here for the first time probably today for most of you. Uh, I'm excited to announce that we've been working uh, with the county and their great team. Uh, Matt Gibb is, is here. Matt, can you stand up and just be recognized briefly? He's way in the back. But he is a <laughs> former township supervisor, and he uh, now leads the economic development charge for Brooks at the county. Um, and uh, with that, their great team, uh, we're, we've been able to, we're able to announce today that we have two great additions to Orion Township. Fu Yao Glass, who some of you may know, may not, but they are producing every piece of glass for the General Motors uh, Orion plant. They're expanding to the Chrysler uh, platform as well. Started in 2009 with one employee in Orion Township. Today, they have, I believe, 180. And they just announced a $13 million expansion that will create 100 new jobs in Orient Township. Also, just met with this group last week, Orlikon Balzers. It's a German company that, that does coatings. Uh, they're announcing a 75 new jobs and a $7 million investment right here in Orient Township. <laughs> let's, let's fly through a few more. This one is going to get a few people's mouths watering. Lockhart's Barbecue. Who's been to Lockhart's Barbecue in Royal Oak? A few of you? Matt Stafford's favorite restaurant in the country. Lockhart's Barbecue has just announced they will be moving to, Ori to the village of Lake Orion. Uh, this year, the village board approved to sell the uh, former village town hall, and it's going to be transformed into this awesome, hip, uh, great barbecue joint, creating 50 new jobs and darn good barbecue. Bruce Sior is an Orion Township resident who's the owner. He could not be here this morning. Uh, let's, let's fly through a few more. We cut a lot of ribbons this year. Uh, one, of the, one of the, I had the distinct honor of being a guest at a really neat one, which was Creative Techniques. Creative Techniques is a uh, packaging company right here in Orion Township. Uh, Rick Parker 
who works for them, uh, called me and let me know they had a special honor. Honda was coming in. So this fall, this past fall, I, I was able to be a guest at this event. Uh, where Creative Techniques received Honda's Special Recognition Award, one of the top six of 1,800 suppliers for their unique environment and manpower saving packing. And that's produced right here in Orion Township. Rick, could you stand up and be recognized for Creative Techniques? Rick Parker. We also celebrated with the Chamber every year. We pick a businessman of the year. This year's businessman worked his way into my presentation two years in a row is my friend Joe Zimmer. <laughs> and is, is anyone from Hunter Pasture here? No. This is one of the new neighborhoods we announced uh, in December at our annual meeting where we pick our uh, businessman of the year. Uh, Hunter Pasture is one of the developers that's building houses in Orion Township. They, uh, Jeff Sacqua on the far left there, uh, loves Culver's so much that they actually named one of the streets in the new neighborhood Culver's Drive. That's the truth. <laughs> so Culver's Drive is coming to Orion Township. So Joe Zimmer, where are you at? Let's give you a round of applause. There he is. <laughs> and we did a lot of ri rock, uh, ribbon cuttings, but just want to put it on the record that ribbon cuttings with rock walls are my favorite. We had one of those this year. I climbed in a suit. So let's talk about the next item, strategic partnerships and initiatives. We have many great partners that help us because we can't do it alone. Unlike some of the communities like Rochester Hills and Auburn Hills that have hundreds of employees and economic development departments, that mostly falls on me. So I, I lean heavily on our partners, which I mentioned Oakland County, uh, Southeast Michigan Council of Governments, uh, and the Michigan Economic Development Corporation. Without their assistance, some of these great things that are happening would not happen. Uh, today I'm pleased to announce, assuming our application gets approved, uh, Orion Township will be in the second class of One Stop Ready communities. What is One Stop Ready? One Stop Ready is a program that encourages communities to capitalize on their strengths and refine their economic development processes for the purpose of implementing their community vision. Being ready for economic and community development is not simply approving projects. It means understanding the effects of leadership, process, and time in implementing a culture of collaboration with community stakeholders. And that's just what we're going to do. So uh, thank you to, uh, to Matt Gibb and his team, uh, and thank you to our township board for all the work that we're going to be putting in. We're going to have to go to school and learn how to do things better. Next is Brown Road, and this is near and dear to my heart. I've been working with the county again uh, and some stakeholders to brighten up our side of Brown Road. Everybody knows the Auburn Hills side. Uh, Pete, I see you back there, Pete Auger. Uh, but um, our side needs a little work. So this is one of the projects that we're going to be kicking off, uh, and we're going we're to be throwing some uh, new ideas and sort of throwing some things on the canvas and seeing what sticks. So stay tuned to that. Let's, let's move on. Uh, batting third and playing third base is Nikhil, put a spell on it, Duabisham. Nikhil as you can maybe see here and maybe you read in the paper, is Orion Township's own winner of, this, of the uh, Oakland County Spelling Bee. 90 Oakland County public, private, and parochial students competed in the bee, with the winner earning a free tip, trip to Washington, D.C. for the Scripps National Spelling Bee during Bee Week 2014 from May 25th to 31st. So Nikhil is here today. Where are you at? I saw you. Come on up. I'll, let's just, I think we should test him. You guys think we should test him? <laughs> are you nervous? Yeah. Okay. Good. Well, you, this is like a preparation for Washington, D.C. So, all right. So I've randomly selected a word. Um, Nikhil, your word is hegemony. Hegemony. Can I please have the definition? Hegemony is a noun. It means leadership or predominant influence exercised by one nation over others. Leadership or predominance or aggression or expansionism by large nations in an effect to achieve world domination. May I have the language of origin, please? Greek. Hegemony. H. E G E M O 
N Y hegemony. Correct. <laughs> that would have been bad if you got that wrong. <laughs> so anyway, that it's strange because that was just a random word that just popped up here on my piece of paper. <laughs> So last year, my brother and I announced our first initiative together, which, if you recall, was to create Orion Chester. <laughs> now, that was our goal at first until we watched one of their board meetings <laughs> and saw how long they were. So we decided that we would uh, leave Terry alone. Terry. <laughs> And so we, we thought we'd move on to a different target. And then we decided that might be a little too big to start, so that we thought we'd go after some more lower hanging fruit, which would be Auburn Hills. Mayor Kevin McDaniel, I saw him here. Where's Mayor Kevin at? Mayor McDaniel, thanks for being here. He's new. So heads up, uh, Mayor McDaniel, we're bringing some hegemony your way. <laughs> but anyway, while we're speaking about being dominant, we have to have a little bit of pride in this presentation. Let's just look at one of my favorite slides of, of this year's presentation. This compares Orion Township's tax rates to our neighbors. We could stay on this all day, but we'll move on. <laughs> um, the other thing I'm really excited to announce is our housing grow, and we have a ton of it. If, as you can see from uh, the screen, in 2010, we had 22 residential building permits. 44 and 11, 75 and 12, and in 13 we had 162 building permits for new residential construction. More than double last year, by the way, for those of you not good at math. <laughs> Orion Township is leading the way in the county and will continue to lead nor at least northern Oakland County for the foreseeable future. But what if you're not looking in the market for a new house? Well, first of all, because I got my slides out of order, I would like to introduce a couple people that are investing in our community. The, the Pulte group is here. We have uh, Brandon and Bob and Brian, if you please stand to be recognized. Brandon is the division president for Michigan. Brandon's a division president for the state of Michigan. The other guys do the work. Uh, but we appreciate your investment in our community. And I was thrilled when I talked to Brandon this week uh, Pulte's had 48 sales in the last 12 months in Orient Township. The average price, $427,000. Hunter Pasture, who's doing a joint development, you can see them on the sign here at Stonegate, uh, they projected $300,000 starting points. Uh, they are closer to $400,000. So it's great news for our, for our community. Luckily for some of us who bought houses in the downturn, maybe our, mar our market values are coming back. And that's just what I'm going to tell you about next. Average days on the market. In 2010, the average days in the market were 99. Down, the last two years, we're down to 24 days in the market. I have some realtors that are my friends. I see some in this room. And uh, there is an inventory, and that's a good thing. Let's talk about home, price, home prices. I picked one neighborhood. Uh, 2010, the average sale price for a house in the neighborhood, 226000 Last year, $392,000. We're heading in the right direction. And I'd like to also welcome one of Orion Township's newest residents. This is Isaiah Asha. This happens to be my nephew. Uh, and he, he, uh, he chose Orion Township. I think it was a wise decision. <laughs> and um, one of the cool initiatives that we have this year for new residents, and not necessarily new residents like Isaiah, but new people that move in our community, is we've worked with the Chamber of Commerce to produce our, our first welcome bag uh, in some time. And I have one here someplace, and I don't know where it is, but I have a picture of one on the screen. Uh, and it looks just like that. And it says, Orient, Lake Orion, where living is a vacation. Oh, there it is. There's Elena, our director of our chamber. And I got to tell you, um, we're giving these things out. When people come to our office to submit a property transfer affidavit, they have to if they want to get their uh, homestead exemption on their houses. That's a good point of contact for us. And uh, we're able to hand these bags off. And these people walk out of there bouncing. So we want to. Uh, thank all the local businesses that have uh, stepped up and, and really helped welcome people to our community. 
So I told Isaiah, I said, Isaiah, you know Orion Township is where living is a vacation, right? And he said he didn't know that because he's just a new baby. But as soon as he did, this was the next picture that was taken of him. <laughs> so Isaiah's on, on the bandwagon for uh, living in Orion Township. So why do, I, why do people like Isaiah choose Orion Township? Well, that takes us to our number four hitter and our designated hitter, Ken the Synergizer Noose. Ken Noose is a principal at Orion Oaks Elementary, which is just next door here. Some people call the Taco Bell School because it looks like Taco Bell at the front. Uh, Ken and his staff came up with an idea uh, to take on a program called The Leader in Me. We're going to hear a little bit about that in a second. The neat thing about this program for me is his staff volunteered their time to come in over the summer without pay to get trained and also worked hard to fundraise to pay for the cost of the program. So right now, I thought I wanted to introduce you a little bit about what's going on at Orion Oaks, why is this such a great program, and I didn't, couldn't think of a better way to do this than to go to Orion Oaks and talk to some of the students that are part of this program. So we did that, and while I was there, I also asked them a very important question. Take a look. I'm here right now at Orion Oaks Elementary with Ken News, principal of Orion Oaks, uh, one of the top seven schools in Lake Orion. Uh, my favorite, my three daughters went through here, and this is one place that some amazing things are happening. So Ken, tell me a little bit about the Leader in Me program and what, what's going on here at Orion Oaks. It comes from Stephen Covey's uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, uh, and they've written a program called The Leader in Me, and it's designed to teach these wonderful habits, the seven habits, uh, to students to be highly successful students. And really, it's designed to be leaders. And so we're trying to uh, instill in our children from kindergarten on up through fifth grade uh, the habits to become leaders. And I tell you, the kids have really risen to the challenge, and we've seen a lot of progress and a lot of areas because of it. Okay, we're going to find out what these these kids really know about the leader in me. So first of all, tell me your name. Tommy. Tommy? Yeah. And uh, so tell me a little bit about what is the leader in me? What is this program? Well, it's about helping kids to stand up against bullies and become a better person. What's on your, uh, what's on your lunchbox there? Star Wars. I love Star Wars. All right. So I'm here with... Wyatt. Wyatt. Wyatt, how old are you? Five. How old am I? Uh... <laughs> What does it mean to be the leader in the Leader in Me program? To do first things first. Really? What does that mean? It means to like put work before play and do, um, and remember to do the things that you need to do. Wow. Tell me what it means to be a leader. It means to be a leader when you inspire greatness. Oh, that's a great answer. Do you inspire greatness? Yes. What does it mean to be a leader? Um, follow the teacher's rules and um, don't care what other people do, just um, think what you do and don't, um, it like push people down, help them back up and of course done. Okay, that's really good. So if you push them down, you want to help them back up? Yes. Okay, that's, that's good advice. What, what does it mean to be a leader? Um, to like, um, get, to like be, not be a boy. Like yeah, to, like, um, like yeah, to respect to others. Yeah. You didn't just hit him, did you? No. <laughs> <laughs> to respect others and be proactive. To be nice. Always be kind to people. Um, do the right thing. It means following all the classroom rules. It means be a, a leader, not a follower. Um, being respectful. Synergize. Synergize. What does synergize mean? That's a big word. What's it work, mean? Work together. What does a township supervisor do? Uh, my dad never told me, but he used to be it. He, n he never told you? Well, what do you think he did? Uh, no idea. I don't know. You think you want to be one someday? No. <laughs> All right, thanks, Tristan. What does a township supervisor do? Um. <laughs> what does a township supervisor do? What? What does a township supervisor do? I think it forward tapes you. I don't know. Oh. All right. Let me ask you another question here. This is a this is important. What What does a township supervisor do? I don't know. I mean. 
You think he just sits around? He never, well, I mean, he just left and came home at night? What, what do you think he did during the day? I don't know. All right, do you want to finish chewing your food? <laughs> so what's your dad's name again? Matt Gibb. Interesting, Matt Gibb, all right. Have I introduced Matt Gibb, our deputy county executive, <laughs> and former township super? Do you guys eat dinner at night together? Or? <laughs> all right, so I know you guys are all probably thinking, seriously, what does a township supervisor do? So Mitch Palermo, who, is, uh, who put that video together with me, who works next door at the TV studio, is super talented. He actually did follow me one day. So I said, man, we got to show that I do something. So. He sped up one day, so just check this out for a couple seconds here. I've used the Linden reference it too. I've used the Gator one day in, in almost two years here, and that was the day Linden was here. I had to keep him excited about the job. So, anyway, um, back on track. Let's talk back a little bit more about what makes our community so great. This was just uh, last Thursday at Lake Orion High School, Special Olympics game between Lake Orion and Oxford. I stopped by just for a minute, and it was mind blowing what was going on there. 2,600 students rooting on our Special Olympics basketball team. I got a little clip where they scored. The place went nuts. Ball standing. Amazing community. Wait a minute. It's a call to the bullpen. <laughs> Roads. Who, who had a nice, soft, smooth ride here today? Raise your hand. <laughs> One liar in the room. <laughs> Bob Kittle. Uh, listen, roads are an issue. Um, there's, these are pictures actually taken in Orion Township. Um, and it's, it's a big problem. I, I don't think I've been more frustrated about anything in my career that I couldn't fix than roads. And uh, I do want you all to know, I did see one of these endangered species on uh, Monday in Orange Township. Um, but it's a problem. And uh, we, our township board, uh, has uh, made a decision to help. Uh, we, we put some emergency spending toward it. And uh, it's not going to fix the problem. It's going to be a small band-aid on a gaping wound. So I don't want I want to try to be as positive as possible. But at the same time, I want to be real with you all. We have a major problem. And I thought Brad wasn't going to be here. I thought he was going to be in session in Lansing. Because Senator Marlowe told me he was, so I was going to really throw him under the bus. But no, I, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> He's sitting right here in front of me. Um, here's a bumper sticker I saw in a car the other day. So uh, tell, that, tell that to our sheriff's deputies in the back. Uh, this is where the solution is going to be found. The solution is going to be found uh, in Lansing. It's not going to be found in Orient Township, unfortunately. Um, and I have been giving these handouts out, which are in the back of the room. We, we have a great relationship with the Road Commission for Oakland County. Feel free to grab one of these in the back of the room if you want. Kind of is some fast facts on our roads. Um, can't tell you how many people call me and have wrong information about funding and things like that. So uh, the Road Commission is not our enemy. The problem is we, there's not enough money in the bucket to fix, fix the problem. Uh, let's get back to the game. Batting fifth. Our own Jacqueline, the artist Preeby. Jacqueline, who we uh, were 
graced by her wonderful talents uh, with our national anthem this, this morning, thank you, Jacqueline, um, is an extremely talented and driven young woman. She's a freshman at Lake Orion High School, and uh, as you see, if you can see, she has uh, been nominated and chosen to be the or Orion Township's winner for the Regional Arts and Culture Award for 2014. That'll be happening in June. So we're thrilled to have her. And what did she do that earned her this award besides just her amazing talents? Well, Jacqueline has a friend. Her friend's name is Madeline. Madeline has a sister named Elena, who we're going to meet in just a moment. Anyway, Jacqueline's friend, sister, became very ill. So uh, what, did, what does a normal incoming freshman do the summer before they start high school? Well, they throw a concert. They throw a concert for Elena here right at our own Wildwood Amphitheater. Jacqueline and her mom, Dawn, who are here today, um, had this crazy audacious goal to raise $10,000 through uh, getting local bands and people to donate things and come to our amphitheater. Uh, so she did that, but she didn't hit her goal. She crushed it. Jacqueline and friends in our community stepped up and raised $29,000 at this concert for Elena. So Jacqueline and Dawn, please stand up, both of you, because and here's a recent picture, but let's talk about this extremely special girl who today is batting sixth and playing center field. This is Elena, our warrior princess, Zalak. Here's a picture of Elena you can see on the right and left. The right was when she started her treatment. Elena uh, was diagnosed on July 2nd, la just last year, um, with acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Uh, I can only imagine uh, what, what this family has gone through. Um, and Elena is here today joining us, and I believe her mom, I saw her mom Terry here, and her sister Madeline. And um, also some of the, I think her Vardar soccer teammates might be here. Are you girls here? I think I saw Lake Orient High School soccer players. So Elena, this bright beaming young girl who's even more brighter today, started this battle. So what does Orient Township do? Orient Township and our community stepped up. Elena uh, came home just last month from the hospital. She's been in since July. And, uh, but before she was able to come home, there's a problem. They live in a colonial in Keatington and it's not capable to handle her new needs. So what did happen? We did our own version of Orient Township Extreme Makeover Home Edition. Totally skilled people and some totally unskilled people <laughs> showed up and did this. And built Elena a new suite uh, for her house right here that she can live comfortably in her home. And then the day she came home was quite, quite a parade. Uh, I missed the, the, um, the welcome at Walden Middle School where she uh, attended. But uh, here's a few shots of what those students did uh, on the day she was coming home from the hospital. And there wasn't a dry eye in the place. And here's a picture of Elena getting driven through the, uh, the tunnel of students. And then this is a picture of her dad pushing her out. I happened to catch her right when she was getting unloaded. And the gleam on her face was something I'll never forget uh, for the rest of my life. So how do we make this all happen? We have an amazing team of people, and I saw three of them here today. I'm going to recognize them. Uh, Beth Shifford, uh, Don Preby, who you already met, uh, Tim McNaught, who works in our building department, and uh, Mike Menino, who's a local builder. Um, pretty much Beth Shifford ran the show, uh, and Mike and uh, Tim helped organize the labor. But pretty much everything has been donated and free. And uh, just an exa a wonderful example of our community. So. Uh, Mike and Beth and Tim are sitting here together. Would you please stand up and be recognized? Look at the Youth Council students go, leaving for school on time. Um, most importantly, though, I'd like to recognize the person that we're, that, uh, um, that we did all this for, who's been fighting and has been such an example. And Elena's here today, and we're so pleased to have her. Let's give her a round of applause, Elena. <laughs> I 
All right, we're getting down to the wire here, and I can almost smell the chili dogs. Um, but we got to have a seventh inning stretch, so you just stood up and stretched. It was good timing. Um, I'm going to talk to you real briefly. I'm going to fly through some, some of the great people that we have here working. One of the groups that never rests is our Parks and Grounds crew, who's done some amazing things in our parks this year. Uh, well, they usually never rest. There's a picture of Dave Crabtree uh, looking studly. Um, one of the controversial things is we tore down everybody's beloved play structure at Friendship Park. Uh, it became dangerous uh, to the point where we couldn't maintain it anymore, so we made the decision uh, to tear down the park, and our wonderful board agreed to build a new one. And uh, so this is just the process that's happened, and we have an amazing uh, structure being created uh, as we speak. Uh, this is one of the this is my only piece in it, Mount Kilimanjaro. It's the biggest and baddest thing we could find. And I wanted to make sure we had it. And you can see here, this is what I do. I supervise. <laughs> I don't know who took that picture. Um, so anyway, we are, we are thrilled to announce uh, Dragon's Den. We did a naming contest. And uh, we, we pulled all the elementary school students in the community. We got hundreds of submissions. And our, our staff voted on the name. And we voted on Dragon's Den. So Dragon's Den is going to be opening. Uh, April 12th, we're going to have a ribbon cutting there that day. One of the most, the biggest things and the craziest things that we've received the most praise on is plowing 7.1 miles of safety paths. We have a nice square block that's just across the street here that covers 7.1 miles. And uh, Jeff Stout and Aaron Watley, uh, who fly behind the scenes all the time, uh, decided, you know what, we're going we're gonna, to uh, provide an amenity for people. This is the most used section of our safety path. So they plowed them. And I got to tell you, the results were f phenomenal. Uh, Keith Aldridge's business probably boomed because I saw cars all winter long parking in his driveway. Unfortunately, not visiting your business, but parking in your driveway and getting out and using our safety pass. So we're hoping to expand on that program next year. As I mentioned, Dragon's Den Playground, grand opening Saturday, April 12th from 12 to 1. We're going to have a ribbon cutting. We're going to have hot dogs. And we're also going to be uh, breaking ground on another exciting project. But we're still stretching. Wildwood, Wildwood, we expect great things this year. How many people know we have an amphitheater? You just saw a picture of it before. Here's just a few great events we're going to have this year. Wildwood Music Festival probably being the largest. Uh, it's going to be Saturday, August 9th. August 9th. This is, gonna, this is an annual event. And uh, this year we're partnering with the Lions Club in probably Oakland County Parks, and it is going to be a huge event. Uh, we're going to do a Run Wild 5K run out there. We're opening up Wildwood for our local churches. We're going to do Friday night movie night, so stay tuned. Uh, there's a, a flyer for Church on the Hill. If you're interested in, in bringing your church out, we're allowing churches to use the facility for free this year. Um, so uh, just to try to stir interest and let people know that it exists. And we're still stretching. Uh, this is something I, I can't talk about baseball in Oregon Township and not talk about the Lake Oregon Wiffle Ball Association. Raise your hand, other municipalities, if you have a Wiffle Ball Association. Just real quick, show of hands. Another area of Orient dominance. Um, <laughs> this is the true organization, Lake Orient Wolf Ball Association. I was a, I was a member. Of, I, I, I was able to attend their opening ceremony last year. Let me just show you what they're about. Lake Orion Wiffle Ball Association was formed by a group of friends in 2001, all uh, from Lake Orion. Uh, Ryan Skelnick was one of the lead, lead guys uh, at the helm starting Wiffle Ball Weekend, group for grilling uh, family and friends over the summer. In 2010, Ryan decided to turn the tournament into a fundraiser. In the first year, they raised $1,100, which they donated to our own Orion's Veteran Memorial. Uh, ever since, their fundraising has grown, focusing on organizations and charities that support military veterans. Since 2010, they've donated nearly $10,000 to our local veterans memorial, 
as well as nearly $8,000 to other organizations such as Wounded Warrior Project, Operation Homefront, and Wins for Warriors. Uh, they host an annual charity draft night, which is awesome. Uh, it's a fun event with awards such as Best Mustache, Miss Wiffle Ball, which is clean, everybody. Uh, and this year it's going to be held right here at the Orient Center in this room. So uh, you're all invited. It's going to be an open event. Um, the, the tournament is hard to get into. I've been trying to crack into that, and I haven't yet. Uh, but uh, Friday, July 11th, um, they're going to be holding their event here. They're partnering this year with Justin Verlander. And Justin Verlander from the Detroit Tigers and his charity, Wins for Warriors, has agreed to match every dollar that they raise. So a great organization, Lake Orion Wiffle Ball Association. Ryan Skalnick, you're here someplace. Please stand up for a moment so we can recognize you. There he is. The guy throws, he throws a mean curveball. All right. Batting seventh and playing shortstop. It's the SS for Sister Souls. Kimberly and Stacy, who are two amazing people who graduated from Lake Orion High School that are always behind the scenes, and they're going to kill me for putting their picture up here. Uh, but they started a group called Sister Souls, and uh, in November I got a call from, uh, I believe it was Kim, that said, yeah, so we hear you're building this great playground. So, okay, good, yeah, keep telling me how excited you are about it. But we have a little problem. What's the problem? Well, there's nothing for kids, um, children in wheelchairs to, to do in the new playground. Okay, so... We got to work, and uh, with this group, it's a 501c3, uh, does amazing things. We are proud to announce our new playground that's going to be just adjacent across the, the sidewalk from the Dragon's Den. It's going to be called Let Them Play. And here's just a couple conce conceptual sketches of the playground. Every aspect of this playground is going to be accessible. It's going to be a one-of-a-kind play structure uh, that we think we're going to draw people from all over Oakland County. Uh, we've Donations started pouring in. I mean, we're working with these uh, women who, uh, quite honestly, I don't know how I give uh, their significant others a lot of credit because they are driven. And, uh, man, Jeff, Jeff Stout and Aaron Watley and my emails are blowing up every day. Uh, but this, uh, you know, I was thinking, yeah, we'll get this done. Next thing I know, I have Fox News calling me saying, hey, we got this press release about this great playground, and there's articles being written, and this was supposed to be our big announcement today. But it's a great thing. We've already raised over $4,000. And the other great thing about this playground is we spent all our money we could budget on, uh, on the play structure last year. So I told uh, Kim and Stacy, listen, we can't do this this year. We can't probably do it for a couple years. We're going to do it, and we're going to raise all the money. So I'm going to ask all of you, there's a, a takeaway from this. Um, and so we sat down with them. I should just continue the story. And they said, but we also want to do a garden. We also want to do a community garden. OK. Deep breath. Uh, so Aaron Watley our, uh, runs our parks and standing in the back, wave your hand, Aaron, uh, came up with a sketch that's very close to where uh, uh, we can get water to it easily and cheaply and uh, close to the bathrooms and close to the accessible playground. And we are going to build, we're also announcing today, our, our first community garden. Yeah. And again, we blew the budget last year. So uh, we're gonna, there, there's flyers in the back. If you're interested in this, there's going to be plots available for lease. Very cheap, $30 if you're a resident for the whole year for a 4 by 8 plot. Remember what I said about copying other examples at work? We're, we're stealing this idea straight out of another community. So they might even be here today. Uh, some of, <laughs> and, and there's going to be options for, uh, for the um, children and people that are in wheelchairs as well. We're going to build some raised beds so they can actually uh, uh, work on their plots uh, from their wheelchair. So in the back, this is your takeaway, most important takeaway. Stacy is in the back. She's one of the sister souls. Let's give her a round of applause. And we, um, we have, we've kicked this off just a couple weeks ago, kind of uh, quietly, and we've already raised over $3,000. It's going to cost us uh, upwards of $50,000 to do this and do this right. So we have several things available. Bricks, benches, they're really cost effective, um, and it's a great way for you to contribute to this amazing project. So please see um, Stacy or Aaron in the back um, and buy a brick. Uh, and that makes me honored to in introduce our next guest, which is Xander Shones. Uh, his mom, Christy, is a local podiatrist. 
She's not uh, one of the original members of Sister Souls, but she got roped into this. Um, and uh, Xander, I'm calling him, can't wait to play Shones. And is Xander here today? Where's Xander? Xander's in the back. And there's Christy and her husband, Joel. Let's give Xander a round of applause. <laughs> and did his friends, Kylie and Maggie, come too? I think he had some friends coming too. Kylie and Maggie are here as well. And, and Xander and Kylie and Maggie, we're going to build you a playground this summer. So thanks to all the people in this room, we're going to get it done. Coming around the home stretch, I'm going to introduce our uh, ninth batter. He struggles a little bit behind the plate. Our fire chief, we're calling him Chief Moo Smith. Uh, chief Smith gave us a little scare in November. He told me he's going to have to go have a little uh, procedure done. And uh, the procedure re involved replacing part of his heart. Uh, we found out it was, he was either going to get the pig or the cow. He got the cow. So if you, that's, that's, him, that's him literally 24 hours out of surgery looking great. And uh, we're having a little fun with this. So... If you come to our counter, you can ring the... <laughs> I mean, and it works, too. <laughs> so last night, it was amazing. I've been working really hard to try to find... You know, it's really important to the chief to find out, you know, who... What's the reason he's still alive? Well, I found him last night. Check this out. It's amazing. Right there. This is the... This is the donor... <laughs> and uh, you can see already, I mean, they, they couldn't have picked a better cow. So anyway, since, since, the, uh, since the chief has his new, all his new pieces and he's uh, working hard, he's, we can't keep up with him. He's got more energy than ever. A um, couple things he's got us doing this, this year. We're going to build a new fire station. We're pleased to announce that uh, we just awarded the bids. Um, this is going to be, re be replacing our existing station, two on Silver, Silver Bell Road. We're hoping to break ground based on the frost in the ground, hopefully sometime in August. And uh, <laughs> this is going to be on Giddings Road, right near the General Motors Orient plant. And the great thing is, is uh, waste management has agreed to uh, provide us with landfill gas. We're going to provide, we're going to heat this building with landfill gas, assuming we can make it all happen, and it could save us up to three thousand dollars a month. Um, just utilizing one of our resources, which some people don't often think of the landfill as a resource, uh, right here in our backyard. Also, uh, I want to draw your attention to uh, another piece of uh, information. Because of all the growth and all the great things that are happening in our community, we are, uh, our fire department is one department that's working hard to keep up but struggling to do so. Uh, this summer we're going to be going probably more than likely out to, to you and asking you to help us support our fire department. If you haven't already, please grab one of the handouts that's on the table out there and study it a little bit. Um, but the, there's a need. If you, if you look at it, um, a couple things I'd point out is uh, this is our staffing compared to some of our neighbors with, um, based on population here. So we have the second largest population and in, in the lowest staffing. Um, and so uh, we're hearing from our residents that they want to have our, our fire department staff. So uh, n nobody likes to talk about millages, but this is one I think that uh, we can all get behind. So... Uh, stay tuned to, uh, for that this year. We'll be doing a lot of informational meetings. Um, and last but not least, I'm going to introduce our pitching staff, which is our township staff. And I know a couple of them scooted out. Um, I am truly blessed to work with an amazing group of 50 or so people every day. Um, I got a few pictures of them, some begrudgingly. One of the, one of the new partnerships we have this year is with our uh, with with uh, Oakland County Dispatch. I saw Captain Wondrack here, and I see a lot of the guys in the back, uh, Under Sheriff McCabe, Lieutenant Toth. Um, we have great partners at the Oakland County Sheriff's Office. Uh, so, so thank you, gentlemen, for being here, and thank you for helping us make it a smooth transition. Um, this, these are just pictures of our amazing staff. If you're on staff and you haven't left yet, please stand and be recognized. They, okay, there's a, oh, there they are. So 
I got a really short clip that when I go to work, this is what this is what I think about. This is what I think about my team. This is how we operate. traveling groups. And then, and then, just like they have the wall in Tiger Stadium, some of our, some of their greats, we uh, said goodbye to one of our greats this year. Uh, Tom Berger, who was our building official for many years, uh, decided to move on to a fishing career in Florida, and uh, is uh, retired. So we're happy to uh, we're happy to see him go. <laughs> Can I say that? No, I'm, kidding. I'm kidding, Tom. We love Tom. Uh, and then also uh, welcome our new building official, Randy McClure, who's here. Randy, a little wave. So that brings it back to our ball boy, which is me. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, I got that picture on the screen. Don't worry. Um, I'm, I've lost 40 pounds in like the last 45 days. <laughs> and I was going to give a shout out to the guy that helped me do it, Dr. Jason Olson. He, he's not here. He's, he's helping other people, I think. But um, I feel amazing. And don't worry, I'm not going to put the underwear pictures up. But... Um, <laughs> They may or may not exist. Um, but I just got to tell you, like I said, I'm so blessed. I'm going to introduce you to a few more people that make my life what it is and a part of my team. That's my family. <laughs> and they're right here in the front row, my girls, um, my wife, Julie, and Rachel, Sydney, and Addison. So thank you, girls, for supporting your crazy dad's job. <laughs> and I'm sorry for embarrassing you. And then um, I got to say that uh, we lost, I lost my father when I was 14, and my mom stepped in and just has been the biggest cheerleader ever. And uh, she's here, and she's right there. And um, so I want to thank my mom. She's got two sons that have crazy political jobs. And uh, where's my brother at? He left. <laughs> He's in the back. Um, but, but my mom, mom, give a wave. She's amazing. Let me tell you about my neighbors. Um, <laughs> so I went to, um, Terry Gonzer is on the right. He's an Oakland Township supervisor. Bill Dunn's in the uh, left, uh, right to left is the Oxford Township supervisor, Pat Kittle, and then myself. And uh, we, get, we, we get together on a regular basis and I ask these guys millions of questions and um, they answer some of them. And so I went to Terry's, Terry's presentation. He had this nice slide, IO3, inner township. You know, Terry's a former engineer and everything's got to be systemized. So he's got it. We, you know, we sit down and one of our first orders of business at lunch is what's our name going to be? So we tried to get uh, Oxford to change their name to uh, starting with an I. I'm sorry, we tried to get Independence to change their name starting with an O. But uh, he, Pat wouldn't oblige. But anyway, Terry has this nice slide. Collaboration, cooperation, and companionship. Sounds so nice. Let me, let me introduce these guys to you, really. Bill Dunn is an ice fishing old timer. He was, this is Bill Dunn. He's, we meet for lunch, he's in his car hearts, and he said, I just got done shooting a Michigan Out of Doors episode on, in Lake Oregon. Pat Kittle, I feel bad, this guy roots for Clarkston. <laughs> is Bruce Pearson here? Okay, good. You guys know who this is? This is Mayor Ford from Toronto. But actually, I think it's Bruce Pearson. <laughs> I know Pauline's here from Addison Township. I'm sorry, tell Bruce I didn't do that. Uh, but literally, I'm just blessed to work with these guys, and they, and they do help, um, help me so much, and they are always there to assist me. And I want to introduce one last person. 
We had, a, we had a great honor bestowed upon one of our teammates, somebody that's been on our team since the 90s. Jim Stevens is our township engineer. He was appointed by Governor Snyder this year to be on the nine-member board of engineers for the state of Michigan. And so what happens when you have good engineers? Well, I'm going to tell you, possibly the biggest coup of all time. Who's familiar with Yates Cider Mill? Yates Cider Mill? Come on, Yates. So this is what Yates looks like. Yates... Jim Stevens. Jim Stevens has engineered a way to put three more wheels on Yates Cider Mill, and I'm pleased to announce <laughs> that Yates Cider Mill is moving to Orion Township. That's the truth. Uh, today we have joining us Mike and Katie Titus. Mike and Katie, where are you guys at? Give a little wave. And uh, sitting next to them is Keith Aldridge. They're going to be not moving, Brian, calm down, take a deep breath. <laughs> Pretty competitive, my brother. Uh, but they're going to be opening a new location uh, this September in uh, Canterbury Village. So one group was particularly pleased about this. Um, <laughs> and, voiced and voiced strong support for our Joslin Road crosswalk. Um, it's not going to be good for, for any of our diets. Anyway, um, Ladies and gentlemen, we are in a great position. Uh, I, I am blessed to be uh, to working and doing my dream job. And I want to just, in closing, tell you a couple things that are off the list this year and tell you what's on the list. Off the list. Thanks to the great work of our clerk and her office, our board packets are online. You can see everything that we see. Uh, Township Hall has been updated, cleaned, purged, decluttered, however you want to say it. And that's thanks to everybody on staff. Uh, Wi-Fi and security have been installed in, in all of our buildings. Uh, we added art in the halls. This is something I've been talking with our schools about for a long time. And yesterday at 3 o'clock, it showed up. We're going to have a rotating uh, in our newly uh, renovated hallway and uh, offices. We're going to have a rotating uh, art display of students' works. Uh, we started a homeowners association forum. This is a picture of one of our last meetings. It's a quarterly group that meets. It shares input and ideas, and uh, we have nearly 100% participation from all of our homeowners associations. We um, started a youth council, which you met, and they went to school. We updated our Parks and Rec master plan, and we are completing many IT upgrades. Let me show you what's on the list for this year, and next year, hopefully, most of these things will be off. We're going to be hosting many tournaments, but the one I'm most excited about is uh, we're going to host a Kava Super Regional Baseball Tournament July 11th through 13th. We're going to have teams from all over the Midwest, including teams, I believe, from uh, Japan. Bill Beezer's here who's organizing it. Uh, we're going to have teams that we're going to be welcoming from overseas. We're partnering with Oakland County on this initiative, and we're thrilled about this. Uh, we're going to be accepting credit cards here at the township, over overhauling our website, more park improvements to be announced later this year. We're going to build a fire station. We're going to do economic development on Brown Road. We're starting a family of the month initiative. We're starting a business roundtable. I'm going to sleep a little bit. We're going to kill Fragmites, and if you don't know what those are, you better learn. And we're hoping to consolidate our waste services. Those are just a few things that we're looking to do this year. So in closing, I want to go back to a quote that we heard in uh, the, the famous speech about the team from Bo Schembechler. Think what a great thing it is to be part of something that is the team. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me. I want you to ask you to stick around, check out all the stuff. Please buy a brick or a bench. And uh, Crank's Catering is going to be open those doors, and we're going to have hot dogs and nachos at 9 in the morning. Yes, we are. <laughs> and uh, when I think about Orion Township, and I'm going to close, there's going to be a slide on the screen with a lot of updating upcoming events, including one that's going to be happening here about emergency, pre emergency preparedness and couple weeks it's going to be on the screen so I'll leave it up there but one of my favorite songs right now which simplifies how I feel is this thank you ladies and gentlemen it might seem crazy what I'm about to say sunshine she's here you can take a break I'm a hot air balloon that could go to space with the air like I don't by the way.